Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to the Ireland chapter of PMI, another lunchtime webinar. Today we are talking on the topic of making it easier to learn and practice project management, which I know is a topic close to all of our hearts. And today we are also joined by John Kelly from the University of Limerick, who are sponsoring us today on this webinar. So thank you very much. Um, John, hello and welcome to the webinar. Hello, good afternoon everyone. Um, the CPM are really pleased to be sponsoring this event and to continue to support our local chapter. Um, we've been around for a long time delivering education and training programs for industry for almost 30 years and our association with the chapter goes back to really the very beginning um, and at the last count I think we have six alumni who have served as presidents including Jackie who I'm delighted to see taking up this role. And I wish her well in that term which will no doubt be very different from experience from our predecessors. I'd also like to congratulate the chapter team for arranging these webinars. Um, it shows you just how adaptable we all can be in keeping in touch. What you see on the screen there is uh, our two MSc programs which are both fully accredited by UL and the PMI and uh, we remain the only university that has PMI GAC accreditation in Ireland. Um, the MSc in Project and Program Management was designed as a fully online program and launched nearly 10 years ago. And it has since evolved and adapted um, to the needs of industry people like you studying part time and working full time. It is also, we've also had the benefit of expanding globally and we currently have over 100 online learners located across 12 countries coming from 10 different nationalities. The MSc in Project Management is a full-time on-campus program. Um, this is likely to change, obviously, with sep in September. I don't see everybody being on campus full-time, but mm. it will be a mix of classes blended um, with online. This is really suitable for people in full-time education that can locate in Limerick for a year. Uh, so basically, if you have any questions or would like to follow up with me, you see my email address there on the screen. Um, I'd be happy to arrange a follow-up meeting if, if needed. So I wish you all the best and I hope you enjoy Frank's presentation today. Okay, Katrina. Thanks, John. Um, so you can see with us who's joined us today as well is, is Frank, um, another Irishman. So um, <laughs> despite the fact that we all thought he was Belgian. <laughs> Yes, if you want to practice the picture there. Uh, so Frank has a 16-year background here in project management. He's an author, he's a speaker, and he's an advisor. And we were very interested in the topic that he, he proposed to us, which is making it easier to learn and practice project management. So this is his tenant and his background here is we learn to be better project managers, not by attending a short classroom training, but by gradually learning and practicing new skills and basically keeping ourselves on the edge of our comfort zone. So we're very interested to, to, to listen to what Frank has to say as well. Um, before I hand over to Frank and let him take the floor, as usual, guys, we do plan on using menti.com. So for hopefully everyone has, is familiar with the routine by now, do grab your phone, go to menti.com and use the code 438627. We just have a couple of questions, the usual questions, and we also will use it if you have any questions or comments that uh, when we have time at the end, hopefully, for Frank to take some, some questions and for, for John as well, who will stay with us during the webinar. You can, you will notice, I think a lot of you will notice that we've actually moved to Zoom. This month we are trialing Zoom. So we've been using GoToWebinar up until now and we're using Zoom at the moment. You can also use Zoom, use the chat and use the, the Q&A there as well. Um, and we also, again, want your feedback. So which is better for you? Which is the better experience? Is it GoToWebinar? Is it Zoom? We are trying to reduce some of the registration steps for you, which we were unable to do with GoToWebinar, and we are able to do that with Zoom, which is just to explain to you, the attendees, the reason why we're trialing it out this month. So come back to us and let us know your feedback. In the meantime, if you can, grab your phone, go to menti.com and use the code 438627 and I'll kick off that presentation in the background and when we uh, tick back at the end of the presentation Frank will have some time to answer some of your questions. So Frank hopefully that's all sounds good to you and you're happy enough to, to take over from me so I will uh, I'll stop sharing and let you you take over. Great okay so if I share oh no try it again you have to enable me new technology guys so give me a moment and I will do my best to to do that now 
I'm not sure how to do it, so you'll have to give me a minute. No problem, take your time. So in the meantime, you can tell us how that weather is going over there at the moment. <laughs> Everything doing well. You are you are over in Belgium at the moment, aren't you? Yeah, I've been in Belgium for about 26 years. Before that, I lived in Munich for a year, which was quite nice. Before that, I lived in Bournemouth for two years in the south of England, which was also very, very nice. Um, and then we lived in Dublin and Dundalk and went to college in Nevi Kenny. It was the only place that would accept me, so I had to go far north. But it was great, great place to go. Really, really good. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm trying to figure it out and I can't, so I don't know if you can give me some direction here. If you've got more expertise than I do, Frank, apologies for this, guys. Uh, maybe if you share your screen, maybe one of us can help you. Uh, speaker view. Maybe click on my name and make me the master or something. Click on my name, right click on my name on the top. There's uh, three little dots. Yep, on I'm on the top right yep. hand side of, um, of my video. Are you see me on your screen? I can, and I'm doing that, but it doesn't give me the option to give you, um, it can, I can make you the host. Is that what you're looking yeah, for? Yeah, that's fine. That would be grand. That, 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 that's it. That, that, that will there work. you go. Apologies, oh. guys. So that's that's the the first test down and over with. So it it um, despite the dry runs, we still come across things that we don't know how to to do the first time. Hopefully, Frank, that's worked for you there, then. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, okay nice. great, guys. We're we're back. We're back on board. Brilliant. Thanks for your help there, Frank. No problem. Now I just switch displays. Okay, great. Now I'm moving myself out of the way. Good. So thank you all for joining. Uh, the topic of my talk today, as Katrina said, is make it easy to learn and practice project management. So let me bring you through this set of work. So who is this presentation for? Well, actually, it's for two kinds of people. And you can choose which kind that you are. First of all, it's any person that wants to share PM knowledge. And this actually accounts, I think, for the majority of people for uh, PMI Ireland, because you're probably used to project management and you'd like to be able to share your, your skills. And this is for any person that wants to learn more about project management. And this is why, well, some people join PMI Ireland as well because they want to get in and learn from other people, which is the right thing to actually do. So I look at it from both angles and you will see why it's for both, both types. Okay, so let me continue. Now, there is a warning that um, I do like to upset about 10% of the audience on something when I talk, and if I do upset you or say the wrong thing, then you just count yourself as one of the chosen ones, okay? So, all right, we can check that at the end. Now, our mission. Now, when I say our mission, um, I'm involved with PMI for about, in Belgium. I have been a member for the past seven years, and we have a small little unit there, and our vision is, is the following. I'll read it out to you is to change the way the world leads and practices project management. That's a big goal, okay? And of course, we want to need lots of help and learn from other people and get feedback. And that's why we, I'm doing this call today is to see what you think of this and maybe what you've done already. And I can incorporate it and maybe pretend it's mine. No, that's a joke. No, I can incorporate it and share it with the world uh, um, also, okay? Um, so this is our view on how we can make it easier for the world to learn and practice project management. The word practice is also in, important. Okay. Right. So there is a problem to solve, and that problem is how to make it easier to teach project management and how to make it easier to learn project management. And again, the same presentation uh, covers the two, and you will, you will see why. Okay. So that's the problem I'm going to solve, and you can ask me that, or you ask yourself that at the end, have I given a good outline of this? If we're able to do this, now being selfish for PMI Belgium, of course, we would like to, uh, for PMI Belgium to grow and attract more people. And this is one of the reasons why it kind of started, because uh, giving a PM book to somebody and saying, hey, look at this, join PMI to learn or to read it, is not really the way you're going to attract uh, people. So, but making them see the project management is not that difficult. 
and they can learn from other people, then, then that's a real way to attract people. So that's why. So maybe you can use this as well to attract people. Now, what is PMI to you? So if you would explain to PMI to your grandmother or mother, um, what would you actually say to them? Well, for me, first and foremost, it's a community of project managers where I learn a lot more from other members. That's, basic, that's the most important thing. And if I come up with something, I can share it and get feedback. Some people can say, Frank, that's a really crap idea. Or people can say, hey, that's not bad. Keep going and you should modify it a little bit. That's really what PMI is to me. Okay. What it's not to me, it's not an organization that only pushes PMI branding and cert certification. Okay. It may seem like that to some. Uh, people because of the messages that uh, PMI always brings, but it shouldn't be uh, like that, okay? We are a community of project managers. Good. Right. I'm going to ask you for permission to rant for a moment. This will, hopefully this will be a little bit of fun as well. So let me rant. So um, how do other people see PMI today? Well, let's say that if we're attracting young people into PMI, they might see PMI first of all as a PM book. Did they see it as a book easy to read? I don't think so. They see it more like this that's on your screen right now. And their first reaction is this, which is not a great reaction uh, to get. We've got to get them away from that. Okay. Now, what's the impact on this? Well, especially for young people, of course, if you give them something like this, they can't even learn how to tidy their rooms while reading something like this. So that's why their rooms are, are so untidy. But it's, it's hard. Young I mean, people are, uh, people nowadays, um, they need to get started much quicker and they, they need to feed it much quicker, less theory. Um, also, PMI does push the branding a little bit too much more than experience, okay? Um, volunteers, I see a lot of volunteers joining uh, PMI chapters, but they mostly end up doing admin work and not really project management training work, which, which is something we kind of got to address and we're trying to do it in Belgium as well. It's not easy, but, but we, are, we, we are trying. Uh, again, of course, in the PM certs and uh, PDUs, which I will talk about more in a second. So how do people pass a PM cert today? Well, they pass it like, the, uh, let's look at a driving test, for example. If you were to do a driving test, how do you do that? You actually practice driving. You go, you go out, maybe get some lessons, you do a driving test online, then you get some more practice lessons and you ask uncles and aunts to, to bring you out, you learn a little bit about, a tiny bit about car maintenance, and then maybe after about six months or a year of driving with somebody else sitting beside you, you can go and do a test. Okay, which is great. And then you can actually get your test and drive on the motorway uh, immediately. That's how you learn something. It's a good uh, way to learn. Imagine if it was a following. Imagine if we brought someone into a classroom for three days or five days. We went through all the theory of driving. Then get them a multiple choice test at the end of it, which they would probably get. And then say, okay, now I'll go and pick up grandma from the airport. She's just returned from her heart operation in the US. I'm sure she'd love to see you. And you can pick her up and bring her home. Why don't we do that? Well, there is a valid reason why we don't do that. The same with public speaking. Just imagine if you were to join a course in public speaking, where you had a lecture, talking all the time, giving you tips and tricks on public speaking, and then you do an exam at the end of it, and you pass the exam, multiple choice exam, and you get your cert and go, great, I'm a great public speaker. I'm a member of Toastmasters as well, uh, which is really, really great way for um, improving your, actually your public speaking skills, but also project management skills as well. It's a good organization to actually join. So that's not possible, okay? Definitely Toastmasters do not follow this model. Uh, in order to grow in the organization, you have to practice public speaking. Right, so some chapters offer CAPM as a way to bring in people into project management. This is a light way to bring them in. But for me, that's very focused on theory. 
really it's theory. You're, you're reading the, still reading the, the PM book. You get a cheaper exam, of course, and then you get a certification. The branding behind CEPM, well, you learn lots of theory. You probably know a lot more uh, about what you don't know, so you're even more afraid to practice because you've got to take all of this into account whenever you run a project. And the branding behind it is not that great. It's like the, the ladder branding of a PM cert. You know, you automatically think, oh, you weren't good enough to get the PMP. The PMP is so strong of a brand that CEPM looks at it a bit deep. If you're one of the one or two percent that have a CEPM, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. Okay, now, don't get me wrong. Certification is still very, very important. It's really the key because it, you need it for your CV, you need it for yourself as well, to know that you're at a certain grade and it looks good on your LinkedIn account. It also gives you goals, but it's not everything. Practice is even more important than certification, but together, they really come together. So that's really the key. Now let's say um, I have a, let's say that the University of Limerick sit down and have a meeting sometime. And they said, you know, our funding, we could do with more funding. Let's have a way of raising some, some income. And we give out thousands of diplomas every year, or hundreds of thousands of diplomas every year. What would happen if we could actually charge people to keep those diplomas? Okay? And we could call this um, a purse draining units where people would have to pay every year to keep the degree that they had. A nickname for this then could be PDUs. I don't think that idea would be very popular. And I don't think the um, uh, University of Denver would ever go for something like that. It would never be accepted. But I think I know other organizations who use this, the, the, the same thing. Okay. All right, now that's the end of my rant. I do love PMI. Uh, I'm very happy to be in it. I, I learn lots and I will continue to be a part of PMI for a long time. Right, so how do people learn? Well, this is a nice graph actually I, I got or seen for the first time about two years ago. Let me go through with you. So at the top you have lecture, reading, audiovisual, demonstration and so on. And then on the right hand side here, you have the retention of what people actually take in uh, and they can remember. So today is maybe classroom training if we do it on project management and I do this myself of course. So I give training with a retention rate, let's say of about 10%. That's one form of training where people want this. Um, but it would be nice if we could go lower down in this uh, diagram here. So just imagine if we could get to here. Or can we even get to here? Okay, so the retention rate will be 75%. Okay, now I got a friend called John, and he does, uh, he imagines a lot. Okay, so just imagine if what you could teach actually in seven hours, just seven hours of a training, could you teach the following things? I list them out here. First of all, you bring people into a classroom and they're comfortable with writing a project charter for the first time. They assemble a project team for the first time. They create a work breakdown structure for the first time. They create some requirements documents for the first time, so they get used to the format. They create a business case. They use an online platform. They even do basic planning of a project, and they learn how to communicate. Can all that be done in seven hours for some people who've never really ran a project before or to, who knows very little about project management and who doesn't even have any certification. Okay. Well, we think it can. This is our approach to do it. If we can do that, the confidence level that we will give those people is, is really sky high. So when they go back to their desk the following morning or the following week, they'll be able to say, hey, I can run a simple project. And that's a fantastic way to feel, okay? And then they can follow a certification after this and learn more and keep continue to improve. So what do we need to do this? In order to get this happening, what do we need to do it? Well, we've identified four things 
that we think we've got to provide. And then that will allow anyone who wants to teach this, uh, this way, uh, they'll be able to do it. And these four things are the following. First, we need a very, very simple live project management framework. We cannot give someone a, a big two prints two book or a big uh, PM book. That, that's just too much um, information. We gotta give them something light, which is very simple that they can recognize. It's very visual, it's free of course, and it's collaborative, so people can work together on it. Okay? And I'm gonna show you this in a moment. The second thing we need is sample projects. This is really fantastic. So they can actually look at PDF documents or even online at sample projects that have been done. And they can use that as a reference to say, okay, well, this is what I should do next. Or there's an example of what someone has actually done. Okay, I get this all the time. It was the most common question when I give uh, teaching myself and other certifications was, Frank, can we see a sample project? And it says, you do not believe the, 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 the few amounts that they are out there, which is a pity. Okay? But it gives people a reference, and a reference is very, very nice. Uh -huh. The third thing is we need to recommend a free PM platform. Okay? We don't want to, we're not in the business of selling PM platforms because there's lots of them. We just want to enable people to get started and remove all those kind of headaches on how do I use this, what's the best way to, to do it, we want to make it easy. Again, it's got to be simple, free, and practical. And to make it even practical, I've done a 11 minute video on using this platform to run it, to use it to run a project, uh, uh, to create, to run a project. So in 11 to 12 minutes, you're, the person already has a good idea and they're up and running. Okay. If they want to use a more complex platform after six months, that's great. No problem, no problem at all. And lastly, um, if I'm giving a, a workshop like this, or you wish to give it, and I hope that one of you or a couple of you do, is that you, you do not want to create this content yourself. You want to be able to say, Frank, can we join for one to see how you do it? And then you take all the content, it's for free, you take it and you say, okay, I'm going to give a first workshop here and then you customize it to suit how you want to give it to yourself. So that's something which we want to do. Well, I'm going to go through these items again now a little bit more in detail. Uh, let me see the time check to see how I'm doing here. Okay, good. Simple Live Project Management Framework. Right, this is what we put together. It's something called PT Express. And it actually stands on the shoulder of John, so it stands on top of the PM book and Prints 2. And it just gives you a very simple path through a project. That's the whole idea of it, a very simple model to actually follow. So if you have a PMP or a PM book background, you can, you can very much uh, use this, which is great. So we start off with the initiation phase, so there are lots of little steps along here. You can do all the steps individually. Or you can just use a project canvas to start off and that will probably get you well up and into the project, depending on how you wish to do it. In the workshops, I use both, depending on the type of audience that I, I have. Sometimes I bring them through all the steps one at a time, or I get them to fill in in this, or maybe half it and then I go through the WBS exercise and then they can fill in this later. Okay, the next thing we have cycles. So cycle planning or phase planning, our um, uh, stages, Prince 2 calls them. So uh, these are cycles of one month each. We like the fact of, of one month each. So people set up a target or deliverables for one month, then they complete it. And then this is a really genius part of it. We have weekly activities for the project manager. We tell them what to do on a weekly basis. That, that just makes it so easy for them to think on what they actually should be doing. And we even tell them what to do on a daily basis. This is so simple, it's, it's, it's really fantastic. Then we have the closing out. So after they go through a couple of cycles, of course, there's some closing out activities. And then probably there's post-project activities. We don't cover those in the training, but we do try to get to here as possible. Okay, so that's an overview of the, the model. Now I'm going to go a little bit deeper into this so you see a little bit more. Now, the documentation behind this model, how big is it? Is it 700 pages? No, that would be far too much to do, okay? 
we have an online manual and we want the online manual to be like so and it is a lot like so so the tasks that's the initiation tasks here or the startup tasks they're like here so you click on the first task this is fully online and this information shows up okay and that's it there's no other data uh, behind this that's all you need to say okay well who's a pro who's a the sponsor for my project that's a person i can run to if i hit an obstacle and he they are supposed to help me okay uh, we will of course in the future allow people to, to take a whole copy of the site and customize it for their own uh, company then they can slightly customize the text so if they're using different words let's say for a sponsor they might be using executive it's possible for them to change that so that that's good the next one then is a project charter actually we call it a project summary but in order to make it easy for uh, pmi i renamed it to project charter for today and it just says okay these are the main um, items you have to have in your document uh, for a project charter it can be a one-page document and you can also add links to some examples for review as well okay again the idea is to make it easy and they don't have to read a chapter of information in order to be able to do that and remember they can also reference some samples as well to see how other project charters have been, been done so really make it easy for them um yeah i give an example later as well just some more points about pg express so it's fully uh open source so it's, it's free to use free to train you can rename it and, and copy it and, and pretend it's your own we, we we don't care um anybody can can use it it uses a lot of information from from the pm book and prints 2 and agile um and that's it for now. I mentioned the rest maybe later if I have time. Okay, one common question I get about the model here is you see all the different activities there. Is um Frank, where is stakeholder engagement or communication? Because with agile, you're supposed to be communicating all the time. So this in red is where all uh, communication is happening actually with people. Okay, so you're constantly working with your, your stakeholders to run the project. Right. Okay, so that's an overview of the, the model, and if you can, I'll give you that address later, you can go to and look that up yourself as well. Now, the next topic is sampler projects. And this is really important or really, really key to have because it gives people reference. So um, some sampler projects, the first one I've done myself is a driving school, which is based in Dublin. And but other people are working on like a train station, installing CCTV and Wi-Fi, electronic system for a satellite, a TED talk event, and so on. So these are good examples that people can pick up, read, read without having too much domain knowledge, they will understand uh, this, this project. So that's good to have. So let me give you an example of how the one I wrote for the driving school works. So I start off with a project scenario, and I say, okay, there is a driving school, and that they are losing 4% of their clients every year. Okay, that's understandable, driving school, and their customers are falling a little bit. Right. What to do? Well, the big idea is to create a free online exam simulator, get people to use this, share the results online, and then other people will see it, other teenagers will see it, and they can click on it, and then they'll know who to call when they want to do their driving test and so on. Okay, that was it. Another idea was to create PDUs around driving licenses and get people to pay every year, but that didn't go very well. Right. Um, so the first task then is to appoint the sponsor. So I remind people in the project scenario of all the different steps to actually follow. And I said, okay, well, the first one is appoint the project sponsor. So then in the PDF document itself, I say, okay, this is what they, um, this is what we say in the model. So this is what a, a sponsor should do. And then based on the scenario, this is the data that we've done. Okay, so that's the data that's added about the project. You probably see some Irish names there. It's actually a Belgian name, Geldof. It's from um, um, West, the Northwest Flanders. Um, so that gives a, a good example of the steps they have taken to appoint the project sponsor. Then the next one is project charter. This is a very, very simple overview of a project charter. Okay, for this uh, scenario of this company. So the project goal is to increase sales by 10% for three years. 
instead of falling by 4%. Very light and easy to use. The benefits, long-term benefits, the main requirements, the estimated time and costs, the major risks, and who's who that we know so far in the project, because we don't know much about the project yet, but we've identified who the project sponsor um, is, and the project manager will be decided soon. Okay. So we continue like that through the different steps. Okay, I've jumped a couple of steps now because I want to show you a bit more and we only have an hour. I don't want to over overdo it. Um, we also go through and help people to actually run a, um, we show how the work breakdown structure was done. And even in the class, uh, we teach how to do a work breakdown structure. It's not easy to do that if people haven't done it for the first time, but we found that with some very simple exercises and you gradually build it up, people can actually do their own WBS with post-its on a wall within one hour. And that's really, really good to see, okay? We've even had people who have a PMP who've never actually done a WBS before, okay? And the first time they do it is in this class. So that's good to be able to teach it. It's also good to, to see and for them to be involved in a, in a group of people who are doing it, because then they can share that themselves, okay? So that's the way you're breaking down the project into different parts. Then what do we do with all these post-its? Well, we put them in a kind of an online container, a little online tool where every, let's say, post-it has its own card here, okay, for now. We expand this later, but that's the beginning because, um, yeah, people want to use tools, and especially with COVID, it's a very good way of sharing information. Uh, to centralize your data into one space. Okay, uh, so that's the WBS finish and that works out really, really well uh, for people to be able to have that skill um, with them. It's a nice one. Next one, lots of people have problems with requirements. They don't know how to write requirements. And again, no, the technique we teach here is kind of, it's easy. Maybe it's not covering all solutions, but it's a great technique to be able to begin with and to give people confidence that they are on the right track for gathering requirements. So I also give the idea of a laptop, uh, a PC. So let's say that uh, PCs are very um, expensive items, let's say in a way, billions of dollars have gone into research in these things. So when you're buying a PC, how many pages of data do you look up? One, 10, 100, 1,000? We actually look up one page. And that page is focused on the technical specifications data. Even It would even fit on a half a page, even less than a half a page. So when we're building requirements for something, we can use that technical description to say, this is the quality information that I want when I buy a new PC. Okay. So we start off with something like this. Then we say, for a laptop, this is what I require. So I want an SSD, I want a screen, I want a RAM, I want a battery, I want a price. Uh, the casing type I want. Okay, but that's missing something very important and it's missing quality criteria, okay? So if we add this here, now I know that if I only get 250 gigabytes of a PC and it's nine uh, inches instead of 13 or it's 17 instead of 13, I'll be out of my requirements, okay? But that's a great way to get people to, to actually think and it's a good way, to, it's good to discuss requirements go like this. So we teach people how to do this and they do two or three, let's say about, about three examples of this um, during the course as well. So again, I document in the scenario, I document some of these also. Uh, now we're then where to store all the documents. So one, if you are a project manager, 80% of what you do is communicating and the other 20% is probably talking to people still anyway. So you need to be able to centralize your data and share data. So if people want the latest version of something, you've got to be able to have that. And you look bad if you're chasing this information and you don't know where to find it. So it allows you, or this simple tool allows you to put it into one place. Okay, so you have your project charter here, your business case, you know, your risk issues and change register is here, it can be clicking in the spreadsheet behind the this and so on, okay? So let's look then at the project charter. You've seen that already. So here I've just, instead of using a separate document, I've just used the text information in the description to add the information that's, that's there, which is good. Uh, then let's say the business case. Uh, this is a sample or a very simple sample of a business case. 
uh, which is built on the same scenario of the driving school. We have our executive summary, reasons for this project, the different options we considered, uh, the major risks, and our return on investment over a period of three years. Again, for people to be able to fit in something like this, it's, it's nice also. It's good. Okay, then our WBS. Uh, so we expand this a, a bit more. So you see now that initially I just put the names in there. So we have expanded them. The way I teach this is I use labels here because it makes it very visual. And the green label here means that the requirements are done. Not the product is created, it's just that the requirements are actually done. Uh, we can use prioritization here. Moscow is a nice agile technique to use, so that's must have. You can estimate the number of hours behind it and so on. Um, so that gives an overview on, on, on how you can basically um, add more information to your work, work breakdown structure. Then for planning, for planning your first months, well, basically all you do is you drag items from your WBS over into your cycle one, so that's months, and you assign different people to do it, and that's it. So you're just dragging and dropping, and that's how you plan. Now, that's a simple planning of project management, but it's enough really to get people started in project management. Okay. Now let's jump to one week later and see what this looks like. Okay, so that's at the beginning of the cycle. So I'm going to jump just one week. And one week is to say, well, this person has the product done. It's complete, it's signed off, and it's accepted. So they're not going to work on this anymore. They can now move on to the next one. And they're actually working on the next one. And the status of that is product to test. And Michelle here is actually uh, currently involved in this one here. Okay. She's got 10 hours done out of 16 hours. You don't have to use the times here if you don't want to, but it just gives an idea. So that's a nice way of keeping control and visualizing um, how your project is going on. And if somebody asks you where we are in the project, all you have to do is take a screenshot of this or even a photo and just send it on WhatsApp. And you say, that's the current status of the month so far. So it teaches people as well how to um, basically communicate the current status of the project. And that's also good to show them how to do that in a very simple way. Okay, so we now have three samples of projects ready, which is very, very good, so we can share those, whoever wants them as well. Right, that's to finish that topic. Let me see what I am with time. So I'm gonna speed up a little bit now. So recommend a PM platform. Um, oh, sorry, here, um, Michael D. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, the pubs are open in Belgium from today, so I don't think I'll be doing anything this evening except going to the local pub. Anyway, he shouldn't be using Zoom, so sorry, Michael. Right, recommend a play and platform. Um, again, I'm not going to push the, the name. I'm just going to say we use one which is free. Uh, it allows people to show and stick to store and share. It's very visual. I like the word information radiator. Um, because then people can create that around their project. It's easy to use, and a team can report progress on where, or where they are. Okay, and then the last one is training material. Uh, again, we want to make this free. It's available for anybody that wants to use. We try to limit the amount of slides in it. It's just enough to get people to start it. We hope it's easy to follow and learn, and we always slightly tweak the slides after we give a new workshop because we are learning all the time. So it's constantly improving. So if you take this and you learn something, then please give it, um, let us know what you've learned and what you've incorporated because it's brought better value and we can add that as well. Okay, uh, this is an example. So there are some other chapters using this already, PMI chapters, and uh, this is actually, um, training in Russia, where Dimitri and Lera are giving the workshop here. And um, they've had a lot of success, actually. They've given about maybe 12 or 14 workshops already, and they found it good as a way to bring people into project management. Of course, uh, after COVID now, um, or during COVID, um, we've actually ran our first workshop online, and Zoom actually is super uh, to do this where we start off, we centralize everybody, then we give them a task, we like to group people in two, and we say, okay, go away and do that exercise, then they come back, and because they're using an online platform, they can share what they have done, 
uh, so they go away and come back into everybody and it's a good way of dividing the work up. So it actually works. It's impossible to do the seven hours flat because that, that's not a good idea. But if you find if you break it up into two days of three hours or maybe three days of two hours, that seems to work a lot better as well. So you can actually do this on Zoom, which is which is very good. And as I said, all the content is online anyway, so that just makes it a hell of a lot easier. Okay. Good. I think I uh, yeah, okay. So the result of this workshop for students. So what's the main outcome? Well, the main outcome actually is this. So people have written a project charter for themselves, they understand why it's there and they understand all the data that's in it. They've assembled a project team based on the scenario or based, they can also choose to do their own project in the example as well, instead of the scenario I give them. They create a work breakdown structure. Again, it's going to be very bad at the beginning, but the third or fourth version would be good. They create a couple of requirements documents uh, just to get the hang of it. They create a very simple business case. They use an online platform and they know how to use it because I tell them exactly how to use it and then they can learn all the stuff later. They are able to plan a project, just basically by dragging and dropping into the following months. And they know how to communicate because it's a very simple, if you use the labels, it makes it very easy to communicate where you, where you are in the project. So that's a lot, but it's possible to do that. Um, the main thing then is people get is the retention is very good. So as I said, when they go back to the office the next day, they, they can remember uh, and they say, okay, I'm now able to do a simple sample project. I'm able to start my practice career in project management. And the confidence level is actually high. Okay, uh, There's a word that's, you all know this, that in, in a, a lawyer practices law um, um, and a, a project manager practices project management as well. It's not something you can learn in just a couple of, of days and that's it. So something that we have to practice. Um, and then the last point here then is teaching others. Yeah, you actually learn a lot by teaching. So if you want to give yourself a goal, you say, hey, I'm going to give a workshop because you will learn even far more than the students in the class can learn from this. That's a good thing to do. Okay, so I'm almost finished now. I have a small gift uh, for you. Um, we have a small little training company um, and my colleague Nader, Rad has a PMP course. Um, so I can give out a free version to anybody that's online for the moment, just send me an email. You can see my email at the end. It's a full PMP course, so it's like it's equivalent of a seven day training. So there's like, it covers a lot of, of information and it's for the current version of PMP. So you're very welcome to have it. If you've done a PMP or already, of course, you don't need the course. So I'll give you one license of Prince2 or Agile PM. Okay, that's just a, a free thing. And, um, but I, I'll know if you do, I will also ask you to run a workshop as well. <laughs> okay, well, let, let, let's see. Right. Good. Uh, yeah, if you want more information about P3 Express, it's there. And if you want more information about the workshops, just send me an email also. I'd be glad to help you. Uh, we are going to work on a new version of PG Express. We've applied for a European grant uh, to do this. And we will know in, I think, July, August, uh, August, September, if we get it or not. Uh, we've built up a good club of people, let's say, around Europe uh, to help us with that. And our goal is to keep it open source and provide a platform for customers who to customize the information as well. So we'll keep you up to date. Okay, so I hope you found this valuable. I think that um, you'll have a chance to give your feedback in a second. Now I'm going to hand it back to Katrina. Yeah, okay. Can you come online, Katrina? I can indeed, yeah. Hopefully you can... Um... Great, and thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Um, you actually got quite a few questions, so thank you very much for that. It was nice and clear, and there are uh, a good few questions. So, guys, I'm just going to share my screen and just give me a second again. I'm just working with the new technology. It's uh, technology. As someone commented earlier, it'll never catch on. Um, but here we are. So, um, hopefully, now you will all see this. Uh, so, I will, I'll actually close this now for everyone because we, we've actually got um, quite a few comments and 
But if everyone can see that, just to say, we normally ask people where they join us from, and as you can see, we've got um, we've got some from 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 Turkey on the wow. webinar with us today. But we have, with the webinars, we're trying to reach all of Ireland and not just Dublin, and and that is proving to be quite positive, which is which is great. So you don't have to come and attend a live event in a hotel room somewhere in Dublin to get the benefits of the PMI. Uh, that's yeah. one positive, maybe, of the current situation. We have people from a lot of different organizations and, and backgrounds, banking, sports, betting, government, engineering, healthcare, IT telecoms, and biopharma. So it's quite um, a range. And Frank, mm -hmm. I think you use the phrase it's community of uh, project managers, and that's exactly what I think the, the spread of project managers across organizations does show us. Uh, so it's a nice mix. And we had a total of uh, 67 people join us today um, as attendees. And we have about 20 comments here. So hopefully you and John, actually, there was a couple of comments for, for yourself here as well. So um, if you can if you can see this, Frank, can you? Yeah, sure, answer some questions. I'll start with the top left. So in your experience, Frank, do you have a preference between Prince2 and PM Buck? But I'm not, I mean, I'm a Prince2 trainer, so I don't have a PMP, so I'm a bit biased. But let's say that um, Prince2 is much easier to start with but the knowledge in the PM book is fantastic. So they are complementary, but to get started quicker, I suppose Prince2 is better. And then for, for knowledge about when you're carrying out that work, the PM book as a reference manual is fantastic. So that's how I would answer that. And the next one, is the model free for anyone, not just PMI members? Anybody, even if you're in the International Space Station, you can still use it. Our license goes that far, it's free. Okay. Um, why are we not using the Q&A? Okay, so <laughs> that's, <can> probably <laughs> a, that's probably a question for me. So it is actually open and people can use it. And again, this is sort of part of the feedback as well, guys. What works better for people, the mentee or the Q&A? So um, we did, and we did actually, Frank, get one question on the Q&A that's also up here, and I'm just gonna scroll to it. It was someone that was trying to get onto P3 um, and they couldn't find the right link for it. So maybe if you could share a link to that as well, and uh, we can share it afterwards. Sure, sure, no problem. Okay, yeah. uh, you can you go back up at the top? I saw yep. one there. Uh, yep. So have you used this model uh, to engage with students in your country? Yes, uh, both in third level schools and even secondary level schools. Secondary level schools that are more technically minded where they build actual uh, electronic projects or STEM. Um, kind of projects in their school, these people like the model. The next one, how many people or organizations have used the model to date? I'm not really sure, but we know maybe of about 30 or 40 so far, so I'm sure there are others out there. There's also other languages uh, popping up uh, as well. Um, I just saw one yesterday from Uzbekistan that they're using it, and I didn't even know that country existed, but it's good yeah. that they are using it, and we love them very, very much. So. Um, we definitely follow up on the WVS training. It is a very efficient tool, but hard to figure out on your own. Definitely, yeah. WVS is hard to do for people who have never uh, been done it. But we've, we've actually, this took us a while because it really went bad for the first two trainings we did. The WVS did not work at all for us. And it's only when we simplified it and gave lots of smaller examples. I, Actually, we start with a cup of tea, okay? Do a WBS for a cup of tea. I couldn't get any simpler. Actually, it's, it's, it still requires a couple of post-its. Okay. Um, what do you, do the providers get out of providing all the templates and instructions for free? Well, it's our way of contributing. I mean, I've learned lots uh, from this. It's a great way to network. And yeah, that's it. You just to, to, to contribute. Someday, my goal is to get the Nobel Prize for project management. Okay, so Here you that's, go. that's my end goal. That's a noble goal. Uh, yeah. Um, is I uh, saw so a nice one here. Is P3 Express based on Trello or an add-in? Okay, so that's a good question because it, maybe I did I, yeah. I did not go into this correctly. P3 Express is just a model. It just exists on paper. It's theory. Okay. Right. So we needed four things in order to make that happen. We need sample projects, we need the model itself, we need um, uh, uh, to suggest any, any platform to run a project, and we also needed to have training material, slides, 
to give to someone to say, here, give a training, okay? So we just chose one platform and the platform we have is PG Express. But tomorrow I might change something, sorry, it's Trello. So tomorrow I can choose something else. So we're not aligned with Trello in any way at all. Okay, um, what's the next? Can you page down a little bit? Can indeed. Yeah, actually there's a comment there for John, just someone who said that they have themselves taken the UL Masters in Project Management, so. Um, okay. John, I agree with uh, Frank that we need to practice and learn combined, but the formal qualification is very valuable. And I think that's the point you're trying to get across. It is, um, you don't want to scare people away at the beginning, like make it simple yeah. for them to learn it. And then I, 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 maybe I should have said this at the beginning, but if we start to teach people about project management by bringing them into a classroom for three days, what we do is we scare the shit out of them because we tell them, you got to know all of this before you run a project. And they get the exam, but they just say like, no way, I cannot do this. We make it look difficult and that we got to make it look easy. Um, so I tried P3, yeah, it's at P3.express. P3 John shared that earlier, so yeah, we'll pop that in the notes afterwards as well, guys. It's definitely, people were obviously checking it out while you were chatting, so that's good. Okay, making P is simple, waters down it, I find it. Okay, I don't understand this one here. <laughs> the big books give respect. I just see a question there, Katrina. Uh, go um, ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll go fully online for all the courses in 2021 because of COVID. Um, well, the university are very anxious to get students back on campus for their, their standard programs, and they're going to do everything they can to get as many of them back on campus as they can. Um, it doesn't affect our fully online course. Um, you know, so we haven't been impacted by COVID in running the online program. Uh, another question, are all ULPM courses taught out of UL? Yes, is the answer to that. We don't have any other campuses. Um, so it's all based in Limerick. Very good. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Uh, the rest are not really questions, but thanks here. I'm sorry for not reading that. I'm a bit dyslexic, so whenever I, whenever I see text, I... I, I, I... Yeah. I would like to contribute just a small bit there as well in terms of, you know, what you're saying, Frank, in your presentation, you know, going back to the basics and, and getting the simple steps in place is, will have a massive impact on people's projects. Um, and we've seen that yeah. time and time again, you know, so, you know, do, if you're if you're ready for a full blown sort of education program, that's sort of at a, a different, different stage. But even if you are doing a, an education program, the way we like to teach it and develop it is like is, is that developing that community of learners um, yeah. so it's a mix of learning and pr bringing practice into the learning and it, it really does work well in our programs as well so i uh, fully endorse what you're saying here today good good okay um thank you john there's a comment here when talking about requirements you're mentioning a moscow per hour cessation technique any tips on getting many stakeholders to agree on a par artist and using this tools. Okay, so um, Moscow is really, really fantastic. Uh, it's a nice, very nice technique for prioritizing, but uh, there is a little issue with it. That issue can be solved very, very quickly. When you ask people how important their idea is, the answer is always important. So you've got to ask, learn how to ask a different question. And I have a 15 minute video on YouTube. So just type in Moscow, as in just normal Moscow, and type in Frank Terry afterwards. And I give you some examples on um, the questions to ask. And when you ask these questions, actually people give you the prioritization themselves, okay? Without even thinking about it. And what they say is then correct. Okay, okay. so it's I'll nice. that up, but I'll, I'll pop yeah. that into the notes afterwards for everyone because because okay. it is true, you, everyone will tell you that everything is the number one priority if, if that's the question that you ask them, so. Yeah. 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 Okay, and the rest, thank you very much. Oh yeah, sorry, one more. Is there an optimal split between theory and practice? Well, uh, theory is always referring back to what can you learn or um, looking for new ideas uh, and practice is key. So that's all I can say. Practice is everything. Thank you. Um, there's, a, like, there's a lot of positive comments and I, and I think it is true. I think we probably scare a lot of people off at the beginning. From from my perspective, I've been about twenty years now in project management, and I came 
came into it, I think, accidentally, if that makes sense. And then after the fact, went and did. Mm -hmm. Actually, I did the master's in UL as well. So there's another person here who can say it was, a, it was, um, it was an excellent master's to do. And I'm very happy that I did it. I came in in that informal way that you gradually acquire the title of project manager and then, then joined the PMI and then did my certification. And I'm seeing more and more now that people are actually doing it the opposite way around. They're actually coming in through university and they're taking formal training before they go out and take a job as a project manager. So um, mm -hmm. there's, if, for me personally, experience helps understand what's in the books and, and understand what, what the master's is all about. So I, I think you, you have to find that happy medium essentially of practice and theory to get it right essentially. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's really the key. Yeah. Okay. So I will, I think if people who are, will say thank you to everybody, but I'm just going to run through a few more things. And um, I have two monitors, which always likes to confuse me slightly, but there you go. I'm nearly there with two monitors. Um, sorry, guys. As I'm just going to show share my screen again. Uh, share and thank you, Damien Higgins. There we go. You must tell me how you set that up, by the way. And you need to give me an intro to meet the guy. Or <laughs> um, okay, so guys, thank you very much. So Frank, thank you very much. Like you said, like obviously the the Ireland chapter of the PMI, we get a lot of people who are interested in taking their their PMI for the very first time, or the and or or all of the other various certifications, the ACP is becoming very popular as well. So it is good for, for people to see that there are different methods and there's there's different bodies of knowledge and different frameworks yeah. that they can use to get them into the idea of um, what project management is all about, essentially. So it's definitely been a very popular topic for that reason. And it's a nice um, it's a nice link into the University of Limerick as well, who are sponsoring us today, just in terms of going from that practicing and learning all the way through to the formal education to get the formal qualification. So they, they all, are, in my opinion, they marry with each other very well. Um, but we don't want to frighten people off at the very beginning. So I think it's been a good mix today. Uh, for for everyone who's um, on the call with us, you, you're probably all familiar with the slide deck that I present at this stage. You will, you have earned one technical PDU for, for being with us today and attending this webinar. And we will endeavor to automatically record that PDU for you in the next couple of days, essentially. So you should get that onto your, uh, to your upkeep of your PDUs. So to, to keep you going and give that on the PMI. So we will also share the recording and the slides, assuming that I've done everything right on Zoom today and we have a recording, we will share and we will share the slides as well. And since a lot of you did ask about the P3 Express, we'll make sure that we send you the link there so that you can check that out for yourselves as well. And you can see what that's all about. Um, and I think that's, we've three more webinars between now and the end of June. And as you guys know, we're gonna take a break then for the summer. You can, in the meantime, go to projectmanagement.com and you can also go to the ECC for some webinars. If you, if, so if you're looking to, to gain some PDUs to keep up your certification, then there are methods that you can do that over the summer months as well. So that's really it from me. So it just remains for me to say thank you very much to, to Frank for speaking with us today and for talking to us about the P3 Express. And thanks also to John for talking to us about the upcoming courses in the University of Limerick. So. Great. Thank you, John. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. John, thanks, Frank. Um, that's it, guys. And we shall talk to you again, actually, in a couple of days when, our, when we have our next, um, our next webinar.